Welcome to Lead to Wine TV. I am your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show. And uh, so, as you can see, we're still using the iPhone because we're recording this all the same day. Um, it's uh, not even 10 in the morning yet. All right, so uh, there's an inside joke on that, and those who know will get it. All right, so we are going to review, as I already pour, start pouring it, the 1999. Titus Zinfandel from Napa Valley. Um, this I bought from Gabriel's for $25.99. So this is one of my more expensive wines that I mentioned on Wednesday's show. Uh, I also have another wine that was a $30 wine uh, that normally sells for a lot more. So, um, but I'll talk about that when I do that one. So um, this wine, according to their website, because I was able to find information from uh, the Titus Vineyards website uh, scored 90 points from I think it was Robert Parker. Yeah, Robert Parker. So hopefully this will be a good wine. Um, one thing that I'm going to call him out on real quick: you can you can still buy the wine, this vintage, off the website for the, in the one and a half liter bottle for 84 dollars. You can buy the 2007 vintage of the 750 milliliter bottle, which these this is what those the bottle is, the standard size bottle. For twenty-five dollars, and you can buy the one and a half liter for sixty-five. I don't get it. Twice as much volume, more than twice as much in price. I can see charging fifty for the one and a half liter bottle. I mean, most people, when you buy bigger quantities of something, you get a, a, a break on the price in most industries. So. I've never really looked at the pricing of 750 and one one and a half liter bottles from the same producer, nor have I really paid attention to a 375 versus a 750 or a 500 versus 750 to see if the price breakdown how it works out. But I thought it was kind of strange. And I thought I'd question it. Maybe someone from Titus can explain to me why um, that is what it is. All right, so uh, it's a 90% blend of Zinfandel and 10% Petite Syrah, and it is Asian American oak. Uh, the 2007 vintage was aged 20% in, um, I think it was 20% in New American Oak and 80%, no, I think it was 80% in New American Oak and 20% in American Oak, or it was the other way around, I don't remember, but 1999, I don't know because they didn't have it in the notes on the website, so let's check it out. Lots of smoke bomb, lots of smokiness, um, you know, it's it's like Fourth of July, and they've been doing the firecrackers, and you got the stink bombs going. Um, a little bit of sweetness to it, but definitely the smoky that 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 type of smokiness. Not not smoke. I mean, kind of maybe a little bit of barbecue smoke, but it's really more the the stink bomb because it has that sweetness to it, but overpowering on the nose. This is 11 years old. Well, really 10 and a half probably. But, um, so this could be peaking or near the end of its peak also like the other one we did on Wednesday. The smokiness is starting to go away a little bit, getting more of a, just a, a fruity, a very, very sweet smell to it. But still a lot of, um, a lot of smoke though. Trailing off maybe something like Cherry strawberries. So let's see how it tastes. Okay. See, initially I was going to sit there and go, it's thin, it's watered down, I don't really get anything out of it. So that's the initial attack. Mid palate wasn't so much. I was getting the smokiness, and then on the finish, 
Then I got everything. I got chocolate. I got the, I got the, uh, the cherries. So we got a little bit of smokiness. Um, very light on the tannins. Uh, it's, it's not very tannic, though. You get a little bit of tannins. Um, almost a little bit of... Like, you almost feel like you, you had the, the, the... Not the cherry stems. The grape stems in your mouth. I get a little bit of that. It's just tasty. This is, it's got a creaminess to it. That's probably from the oak. But um, this is a wine a lot of people will will enjoy. Um, it's a 14.5% alcohol. So the alcohol doesn't come really, doesn't really come through. It's nice and contained. Uh, Zinfandels tend to be really big uh, on the alcohol. Um, I like Zinfandel. It's probably my favorite variety. It is my favorite varietal. And I don't do very I don't do it very often on the show because I I don't want it to be a Zinfandel show. That and good Zinfandels tend to be kind of out of the normal price range of the show. It tends to be over ten dollars. Usually they're closer to twenty dollars for the really good stuff. But you know they tend to be at least fifteen dollars. At least the ones I've seen that I've looked at. It's like man, that's kind of out of the range, out of the budget. But overall, I think it's really good. Ninety points. I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe a few years ago when it was reviewed, it was a ninety point wine. For me, it's it's probably closer to. I really do like it. I rarely give ninety. I, I really don't. I don't give a lot ninety pluses out very often, just because I think you really should be spectacular. For me to give out a 90. So I'm going to go 89 on this. Um, I think it's a great wine. I think it's very, very, very good. It just, I don't think it, I think it's probably on the decline. So it's probably not going to get that over that hump to get to 90 points. 89, definitely. If you find this in the store, I would say definitely buy it. I'm sure all the other vintages are really good. Um, I mean, the, the current vintage is selling for 24. So, um, Right, twenty four. Yeah, so selling for twenty, oh, twenty five. I'm sorry, selling for twenty five. So, you know, it should be pretty good. All right, so um, uh, business stuff. So, all right, so anyway, PayPal links or the PayPal buttons contribute. I'm not asking for twenty five dollars, but you know, hey, buy a bottle of wine um, or half a bottle. How about that? Five bucks or two or one, whatever you want to contribute. We've got the um, uh, subscription model. $5 a month automatically. It will end after 12 months automatically, so you don't have to worry about it going all forever. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure the ads are still up there. I haven't decided which ads I'm going to take off, but I'm probably going to eliminate some ads just because it's just... They're not doing anything, so why have them on there? I'm giving them free advertising. They're not getting, not getting anything, bringing any revenue out of it. So there's going to be a few ads. I'm going to leave the Palette Press Network on there because I don't know what the performance is on that. And they tend to have some other ads. Uh, seems like they have some somewhat interesting ads that come up. And I want to give them a shot. Um, and of course, I got my Google ads and I got my geek, my uh, Think Geek ad on the top. All the geeks on the show, man. Come on, click that. Also, uh, just we got the library. I know I'm doing the whole hawking stuff, but um, I was just talking to uh, Robert over at Wine Styles in the Rim here in San Antonio a few days ago. He was asking about sommelier stuff, and uh, I referred him to a whole bunch of books that I've already read. Um, if you want to do the same thing, I've got in the library, so you're going to buy stuff. It'll be library, um, a whole list of books that I that I'm using for the sommelier school. Uh, click on those if you want to buy them from Amazon, or you can buy them locally to your local bookstore. So it's not like you got to go through me. But if you have a hard time finding some of these, which you might, you can go through Amazon and might as well use me, right? Use my link. Um, that's going to do it. We will have another episode on Wednesday and Friday and all that. There's a possibility I might reduce these to one a week or two a week because I need to concentrate on sommelier school because I may want to try to increase the frequency of sommelier school. And I've got the test coming up soon, and I'm not I'm barely halfway through all the material of, of, of the classes. I mean, I know the material, but I'm trying to teach it. So I want to get that done as soon as possible. So there might be some changes in the future, but uh, we shall see how it all works out. Uh, I know I will not be at South by Southwest, so I wish I could. All right, so, um, and if you are South by Southwest, 
and you can come to San Antonio, let me know. Not going to do much, but maybe say hi. Maybe, you know, have a cup of coffee. Well, I don't drink coffee, but anyway, go hang out. All right, that's going to do it, and uh, we'll see everybody again next time.